My name is David, and um, on June June fifth, twenty twenty one, I got uh, I got the Moderna shot. I don't know if this video is going to be a waste of time as as far as being scrubbed off the internet or something. But all I'm attempting to do here is tell the truth. Something told me in my I have so many other things to do than this, but I just like I feel completely gaslit by my own country that I didn't even receive a single dime. Not that I'm looking for money. Nobody affirmed that what this did to me was make me very sick. And, and what I want to do is explain my story. I have difficulty speaking, my back is out, and I have multiple pain disorders. So I hope someone clicks on this and tries to piece together what it is that happened to me. And so I can do it in an edited form because I, I, I can't video edit. You know, like I don't have to worry about my, uh, I get breathless because of a throat contraction disorder. So I can just stop the video whenever I want. So this is my belief after everything I went through. That what happened to me was myocarditis or it, it was likely myocarditis. And it's unfortunate because of the state I was in, because of things I didn't know, that I, in order to be diagnosed, you have to get it imaged within a certain amount of time. My heart was only imaged. My heart was like the last thing that that was looked at in my case. I can't even describe to you how sick I was and that it was not normal. Um, my background. So I'll give you my background very quickly. I have 12 different pain disorders. 12. Some are extremely painful. And um, so I have intractable pain. I also have injuries throughout my body. And so I'm just used to dealing with a lot of pain, also a lot of abdominal pain. But the things I deal with, um, I had in check and I've had them in check for quite some time now you know like I exercise every day uh, to, to a point where I know how to teach people how to get better and so what happened to me on that day absolutely destroyed my life for a period of time and um, so today I'm left with the uh, Something I don't, you don't you usually hear as far as effects, but the effects, the other effects, you'll understand. This one, um, I was left with a rare gallbladder disorder. Okay, um, I had a reaction from this injection, from the Moderna injection. I just had one. Um, after 35 hours, maybe. So I knew it was that, and um, so I had one one Moderna shot. So I want to tell you things that are important. I have autism. And so with autism, I believe, so I have level one autism. I don't have an intellectual deficit. These are things you might want to know. I have a very hypersensitive nervous system. I always have, and probably all people with autism do. And so I tend to get rare reactions to drugs. Um, you know, like if it's, it doesn't matter what kind of medication it is. I've been through very rare reactions, serotonin syndrome, um, strange things happened to me, very unfortunate things. I just had, uh, just to tell you, you know, people who say, well, look how rare this is. Last year I was in the hospital because I woke up and I had the stomach flu and I had intussusception. And an adult, that's uh, one in uh, uh, two people in a million. So don't tell me I don't know what I'm talking about, okay? So to give you an idea, my top pain disorders are adhesive arachnoiditis, which is extremely painful. I have a full body intractable pain disorder like CRPS over my whole body, so like burning and aching and all that type of stuff. So I'm used to pain. 
for over 20 years. And so um, there, there's other abdominal disorders, but you know I have them in check. And so when I present this to you, I'm presenting to you without my gallbladder. I'm trying to go back when I didn't have that because this is what caused it and I can't find any information about it um, or not much uh, there's other people whose um, gallbladders got inflamed um, I don't know if mine did that but if it did would I have got jaundice and all that type of stuff I don't know I'm not going to pretend I'm a doctor but I'm also not going to pretend I don't know some stuff what I'm telling you is I'm not a person who has not suffered the worst things in this on this earth so I have a good, um, I have a good view of the suffering that I went through with it. You know, like I'm not someone who's never suffered and then got this and been like, oh, you know, like, so. Let's just say I was, I'm very troubled about what happened and not many people stood up for me. I felt very alone during it. I had just been diagnosed with uh, quite a few things in 2021, late 2021. So like it's probably just before this, and I was happy to get my diagnosis from my pain disorders after so long, but I have a spinal disorder called adhesive arachnoiditis. So I have spinal inflammation. It's not active. Well, it's always active, but not to the degree that like acute inflammation. So my concern was for like six months as you know, I live in Canada, Ontario. So the, uh, one of the worst places in the world to, to be with this, with this virus, <laughs> just the, you gotta wear this, you gotta do this and do that. And so I got, I got caught in it and, um, and I, I spoke to some people and I wondered about it and I worried about this. And they were saying, you can't go here or you can't go there. Like, you know, like you're going to need some type of passport. I'm just telling the truth here. So, so YouTube, don't tell me, you know, like, don't shut me off just because I'm telling the truth. So I was worried. I did speak to probably a couple people. But I felt forced and um, I went and got That's not something I would never do ever again. So I went to my local pharmacy. I got it. I remember sitting down in the office. I remember everything. I have a very good memory. And, uh, you know, I remember waiting in there. You know, they could say, wait 10 minutes. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I left. Went to sleep that night. I woke up. I was fine. Went through that day just fine. And I remember I was going to have a phone call with my brother uh, that night because something was troubling me and he was going to, I was going to talk to him about it. And it was my dinner, like I'm sitting down here with you right now. And I was on the phone talking to him. And at the end of the conversation, uh, pain in my body that wasn't normal started to really pick up. I'm like, okay, something's going on. My legs are burning much more than they regularly do. So what's happening? I get this wicked shot down my leg, which happens in my disease, but not the way that usually happens. I'm like, okay, something's going on here, but I didn't feel like too overwhelmed or anything. And it was the end of the night anyways. I had to get up, wash my dishes, stand around for maybe an hour or so. And I went to bed wondering, like, what is this? There's something there. Take my sleep medication because of my pain. Go to bed. It's Let's just say it's 12. Probably was 12. I wake up. Why did I wake up? It was about three and a half, four, four hours later. So, so let's just say it was 3.30 or... 4 a.m. I woke up with multiple things wrong. But the main reason I woke up was because I couldn't breathe. Now, that feeling was scary, and that lasted for about four, four or five hours, I would say. 
Um, yeah. I woke up because my... My breathing was disrupted in a way that never happens to me. I'm not saying that that type of thing, and I haven't had trouble with breathlessness before. This was different. This was cardiac. This was because of something that happened. And I knew I was right because at the same time, simultaneously, when I woke up and I couldn't breathe, my legs and my arms were shaking, and I could not stop them. I remember taking one arm and trying to stop the other arm from shaking. I just couldn't do it, so... Um, eventually I got up out of bed and I went to go to the bathroom and I remember going to the bathroom and I, I was urinating and it felt like, like a kidney, like a kidney stone was coming out. I'm not kidding you. That's how it felt. It was doing something to my body. I've had quite a few kidney stones, so I know what it's like. S something which was Moderna had done something to my nervous system. That much was obvious to me. And I was suddenly in a sickness and an illness that did not reflect anything I've heard in the last three years. Now, someone like me, like I don't, I'm not the type of person who likes taking extra meds. I like waiting for the times that I have to take my meds. But I needed pain medication badly. Yes, I had all the flu. I had all those types of symptoms, those regular symptoms. Got up. I had to take my temperature because I felt like I had a fever, and I did. I had it for two days, but my meds brought it down each time. But when I woke up next morning, it was there again. It wasn't... Um, so like, you know, like I got to my counter and when I got to my counter where I, you know, like I eat my meal, I take my meds in the morning or I eat my other meals. The only thing I could do was hold on to my counter. Why? Because I had a general sickness over me, but because I had such severe abdominal pain, abdominal pain that I, I didn't have previously. This was like overnight and it was on both sides. And I didn't know what this was. It was just so painful. All I could do was hold on to the counter. And um, you say, why don't you go to the hospital right away? Because I didn't know what was going on. And uh, I was just in a place back then where sometimes I, was just, I, I wouldn't go to the hospital because I didn't want to be there. I always pushed myself through my routines no matter what guys I've had kidney stones gallbladder attacks this in a susception those things those types of things I still I still go around my do exercise stomach flu I did and uh, I didn't notice until I had finished an exercise routine. I just remember being so... I was really scared, man. You don't know until you take your shirt off. I went to my bathroom because, you know, I'll work out and then after I'll go have a shower. When I took my shirt off, I looked. I'm like, whoa. There's a rash and it's from like my belly button area all the way, like my whole abdomen, my whole mid-abdomen, all the way up my chest, halfway up my neck. You're going to tell me I'm, I'm incorrect about what I'm speaking about? You're going to try to censor me? So I knew there was something wrong. In the very least, I was having an allergic reaction. I have autism. So my nervous system is not like yours. And it's been like that my whole life with many different medications, you know, uh, antibiotics, whatever it is, the, everything like that, NSAIDs. I, I remember phoning pharmacy, phoning different places, and my pharmacist, oh, it's just normal, you know, like, 
no one expects to take a phone call of someone that's having myocarditis, which I will get into further. So, so far, the things I present, a uh, big rash on my abdomen, that's a check mark. Breathing, that's a check mark. Abdominal pain, there's a check mark. And just listen for, for my other. I, I go walking t twice a day. I love, I, I will not miss my walks because, you know, with intractable pain, it's not nice being cooped up at home. So I love being out in nature. And I remember going out and walking and don't be mistaken for the flu symptoms, okay? Well, you're going to say, well, you have adhesive arachnoiditis. Well, no, you've never seen me walk. I can walk like a normal person. I can walk quicker than a normal person, or, you know, like, quick. And don't take me for um, bragging and all this type of stuff. This isn't what this is about. It's not what this is about. My dad came and, you know what, he didn't even notice. That was, that was, you know, like, I don't even know what to say about this. It wouldn't have happened with another person other than my dad. He's just like, you know, he's just sick. He, he has problems walking. Guys, I could barely put one foot in front of the other. There was something really, really wrong. There was something really, really wrong. I have never walked like that once in my life. Once in my life. Whatever that was. And that lasted two days. What that was... Within a two-week period, I went for, so for my two walks I take every day, there was something wrong with my heart. Here's the other symptom. My heart was either pounding really hard or just be consistent. Boom, 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 boom. And it wouldn't stop. I couldn't get it to stop. And it had nothing to do with my gallbladder, nothing. Or it could have partly had something to do with my gallbladder. And I knew it was my heart. What else would it be? I would go out for a walk, and and by the time I... Let's just say I walked... Um, I didn't walk a mile, guys, that day. These days. I went for a walk, and by the time I got maybe... 300 feet... I felt like I was going to pass out, like literally, like I'm like, I, I could fall asleep, no sleep meds, no nothing like that. I was like, what is this? I was getting really, really scared. And I'm not the type of person who something really bad is going to, you know, scare me in that way, but this did. I'm like, I'm going to pass out. I could go on the sidewalk right now and do that. And it, I could see my, like my, my, um, my, vision shimmering as if I was going to pass out. That lasted, I don't know, that lasted about a week. It just kept happening over and over. And yes, I brought myself to the hospital after six days and there was still a bit of the rash left. And he just said, it's just, you know, everyone gets this type thing. And, and that was it. And, you know, when you go into a hospital and you sit down, you, for me, usually I tend to feel better. And, you know, things get worse as I'm, like, moving around. The, what this was was, and I was just there for a brief moment. Our hospital is absolutely filled. I'm telling you, doctors just try to pass you through. So can you imagine this is the beginning of this virus, and he's dealing with all people coming with flu-like symptoms, and he comes and sees me, and he sees no different even though I'm trying to tell them. But this was still at the beginning. This was attacking my heart. I know it was myocarditis. But there's no way for me to prove it. Now, getting a scan a year. So I got a scan about a year in. I got my heart imaged in all the right ways that I should have. Ultrasound, echo, whatever... I, I got those all done. I feel like this rebooted my nervous system. I remember bringing trash down to my, you know, I live in an apartment, down to the to the room where the garbage is. I just remember having a thought, because I have a partial eidetic memory, so I remember where I was, where I say things. I remember 
feeling cursed. I'm like, I'm cursed. This thing has literally reversed my nervous system somehow. What's wrong with me? No one's telling me what's wrong. And so, you know, eventually I start going to the hospital over and over and over again. And it's quite clear, you know, I realized that there is a problem in my abdomen for sure. So, you know, these heart things were eventually got better month by month. That's just the way that I see that that happened. I was left with terrible abdominal pain, but now just on in the center and to the right side. And I, I figured it had to be something maybe to do with my gallbladder because suddenly I couldn't eat fats anymore. I couldn't eat whole eggs. I couldn't eat butter. I get, sorry, I get diarrhea. This wasn't happening to me before. And that was an indicator to me that it had to probably do with the gallbladder. So I went in and I started looking at my gallbladder and they started doing a lot of different tests. And, um, you know, blood panels, um, they were pretty good to me at first. Palpation of my gallbladder, okay? At first, they were like, you got, you know, he probably got a gallstone he, because he pressed it in and I'd, I'd yell out. It's still like that now. I take anti-colic medication. I have a permanent gallbladder disorder. And I, it's not as easy just to get it taken out because I suffer with a very severe type of scarring. And I just don't feel like I can take that risk um, right now anyway. I'll tell you what that disorder is in a second. So they're doing all kinds of tests, but nothing's coming up. This guy's got the, you know, the symptomology, the presentation of uh, a gallbladder attack. He doesn't have yellowing of his eyes and all that stuff. And this is the way my whole life has been with all my disorders. It's always been a mystery that I had to go and solve myself. And I will say that it was me who solved every single one of my disorders. <laughs> That's what happened. And it was no different with this one too, so. It's a many of them. That's how it turned out. I've had a hard life, man. After a while of going there, I think I was at this particular hospital probably 30 times in two years, 30 times. And it wasn't unusual for each one to be 10 hours, sometimes 15. So you can imagine I spent like 400 hours in the hospital because of this. Because, because of Moderna. Because of the way that they were pressuring. Pressure, pressure, pressure. You can't go here, can't go there. I'll never be so stupid again, man. I'll never be so stupid again. So after a while, I feel like these people are looking at me like a hypochondriac because nothing's coming up. Suddenly, I just feel like they're treating me differently. Because every time you come in, it's like, okay, we'll take your blood, we'll take your urine, we'll do these, your liver tests, enzymes, all that stuff doesn't come up. Start questioning you with other things, start being rude to you. I remember uh, a physician was very rude to me. And what she said, I remember saying to her and correcting her about medical information that she didn't even know. I'm not, like I said, I'm not trying to, to brag to you, any of that type of stuff. I was talking about my gallbladder uh, having, uh, what is it called? Um, uh, what's that called? Um, There's a special test done on the gallbladder. And I, I said the name of it, and I just remember, she's like, there's no such thing as that. And there was one similar to it for the heart. Um, in any ways, I corrected her, and she still didn't believe me. But I, but I was right. This is what I was facing. So after a while, they're like, okay, we're just, you know, we're going to give you an immediate, you know, you know, within a day, an endoscopy. I'm like, okay, here I am on uh, uh, some dangerous meds 
for spinal inflammation called Toradol. And I'd been on it for 10 years. And here's where things got really rough for me. Do you understand what I'm saying? If I tried to walk, so in the first two, three weeks, if I tried to go on my daily walk, I felt like I was going to pass out, lights out. I get so tired. It was attacking my heart. What else do you think it was? It was attacking my circulatory system. So I had an endoscopy and something came back that was frightening for me. They said that yeah, you have four peptic ulcers, so not bleeding. Like, wow. I'm like, the first thing I said to them was immediate and I knew it. I'm like, I know what happened here. This isn't because of this. This is just an incidental finding. I've been on this for a decade. You're only supposed to be on for like most five days. But my pain disorder, adhesive arachnoiditis, is the most painful disorder on planet Earth. And it involves suppressing spinal inflammation. And I was so scared that I knew I had to take this medication away. It was the only way I could find out if I was in fact right what would I do? Would I be able to even walk without this med? So right there, I was forced to rethink my whole life. And yes, I was scared. That was my crutch for pain. I came up with a system and I started taking a bit away, a bit away. You know, I took one first. You know, like I, it was just very tough to do. My legs were just on fire when I go to bed. Um, my family physician said, we'll give you, how about you take another opiate on top? And I'm like, you know, very reluctant to, to start doing that. But I knew I had to. And when I did that, I noticed I could walk better. Um, it was killing pain, but there were different benefits for each. And the transition eventually worked. I've had very bad luck because bad and good, uh, both. I was set up with a general surgeon to look at my, to look at my gallbladder to see if they could find anything because they weren't finding anything. And it's quite obvious you press it in there. It was like I had a gallstone. And he said to me, we're going to get you a HIDAS scan. It's a scan where you lie on your back. You can't move. You stay still for two hours on your spine with adhesive arachnoiditis. I had to do that not once, but twice. I got the results, but not before that surgeon was booted out of practice because, like not booted out of practice, but for that year, because he forgot to book his surgery hours. So there I was left out without a doctor right there. It's not easy, you have to wait like another six months to a year where I live I waited a, a year just give me a sec here the first one I went and had a HIDA scan they messed up because they didn't have the proper injection called CCK that they're supposed to give you instead they're like you have to drink an insure and uh, sit on the table if I did that I have, have diarrhea because I have lactose intolerance, so they didn't think it through. And they, they're supposed, every hospital is supposed to have this. So the test results didn't come out right. Actually, it said I had a hypo gallbladder. I let that be. About six months later, the radiologist was nice enough to call me back and say, David, do you want another HIDA scan? We have CCK. I said, okay, I'm coming in. I get it done. He reads it in front of me and my dad. And he says, um, your gallbladder is at 93%. I thought, hey, you know, like, that's good. It's almost perfect. But I'm very inquisitive. And so as I'm leaving, you know, because I don't want to be left with nothing also, I say to him, if there's such thing as a hypo gallbladder, is not something like a hyper gallbladder? And he said, no. So I said, okay, I left. As I was eating dinner like I am now, 
that night I looked it up lo and behold there it was I found it the cause of my abdominal pain I was correct I was correct it wasn't those the ulcers in my stomach which are now healed long ago now a rare gallbladder disorder was like one in sorry for men is like one in 400,000 people for women it's eight times uh, less common or more common so it's like one in 30,000 for a woman and it's like men it's eight times more gallbladder dyskinesia hyperkinesia so I have all the symptoms of a gallbladder attack that's all I need to say but with functional which means that most surgeons will not take it out because it's still functioning very unfortunate and so so there it is I, I found my answer but not after uh, a lot of hell a lot of tests then then I ended up getting my heart tests all of thorough tests done for that you know echocardiogram uh, ultrasound everything that is supposed to be done if you have myocarditis why am I getting this done after I learn that it that it heals after a number of weeks a number of months now I'm gonna get flagged for this or they're gonna tell me to take it down but I had to do this it rearranged my life it took away lucidity what do I mean by that I don't know what I don't know what life really feels like anymore without uh, guys all I have to do at any moment in time is pressing my gallbladder and it it's like a gallbladder um, gallstone same thing no difference I've read our, all the articles about this this affected my heart and I could tell from the beginning I could tell from almost the first day that rash let me know a lot about this it was in the very least an, uh, a severe allergic reaction I woke up because I couldn't breathe you know most people might go to the hospital right away but in that point in time I was so sick in the first place that that I didn't and it was uh, it was a bad choice that's past I've been sick in many different ways in my life um, some by my fault some not my fault this I could feel changed something in me I felt because I have a, a, a spinal disorder of inflammation so that's you know like cerebral spinal fluid scarring you or those are things that you don't want to touch you don't want to alter but that's exactly and what guys I'm doing this with my back is it okay so I'm all I'm not that comfortable I felt like it rearranged literally inside me this changed this like without knowing anything about um, RNA or whatever gene editing and listen I don't I'm not gonna pretend I know a lot about that and I understand it doesn't edit your genes like but it's not good either whatever this is it made me very sick I've never been sick in that way after or before this wasn't just an allergic reaction it was my heart it was my heart and it left me with a permanent gallbladder disorder that's not common so you know I I it's just about five months ago I filled out uh, a form um, for restitution and to, to give my story my doctor filled it out I handed it in they'll never answer me back they won't hear me they won't listen to me I've called many different places so this is the only other place I can tell you my story and they're sons of bitches for not listening to anything you heard me right and this is why we're, we're living I don't usually talk like that at all ever we're living in a time where uh, it's evil thanks guys for watching